That is quite the loyal uh, following. Uh, Antonio here on stage, he has also been a big part of Academy and you organized Malaga, right? right. So that's a while ago. Uh, 10? 11? Uh, 2005. Yeah. Wow, 12, 2005. Yeah. And now he is back to give us the uh, community keynote and uh, I'm much looking forward to it. It's a great pleasure to have him. Uh, yeah, give him a big hand and let's enjoy the show. Okay. Thank you, Frederick. Okay, so I think maybe uh, most of you know me, but uh, just in case, I'm Antonio La Rosa, and I have prepared a small slide here to uh, introduce myself. Um, yes, I'm a KDE developer since the 97. That's been a long time ago. I've made, I've uh, helped in any way I can. Uh, to KDE during those times when we were very, very few people. And from 98 or something like that until 2000 something, I made something like 100 uh, conferences around Spain in all kinds of events here, mostly at universities. Uh, since 2013, I've been a SUSE developer. Uh, currently, I'm at the, working at the SLE desktop team. Um, as you know, uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise uh, currently doesn't have uh, uh, the KDE desktop included, so it's not easy, it's not uh, direct to install KDE. Uh, but uh, as part of my job, has been, I've been creating KDE packages for, for SLE, and there is now a, a way to, for KDE users on, on social Linux Enterprise to, to use KDE. And I've been a president of KDE España since last year. Okay. This is uh, my, my first uh, conference, the first time I, I went to a KDE developer group. And you can see that we were very young there. <laughs> I'm the guy next to the column. <laughs> and you can see also here that, uh, that we were very few people. We were, in this picture, I think we are some, something like 30 something. And there are, of course, a few developers that couldn't come to, to Nuremberg. This, this happened in, in Erlangen, in the University of Erlangen, next to Nuremberg. And there are a few developers that couldn't come, like Sir Tag from India, like Roberto from Argentina, like uh, Uwe from uh, Namibia, and probably I forgot some others. But uh, we were, uh, you see, very few people. Um, see, if we can compare that with uh, this picture from a couple of years ago, we can see that uh, we are quite a lot more. Sorry? Uh, no, this is from Coruña. From Coruña. And we can see that yeah, we have grown a lot. We have uh, grown quite a lot in the diversity, and we are very different people all around the world now. We can see here another picture of uh, the KD community in India. This is from ConfKD Inn. Uh, I think that's from this year. Yeah, last year. Okay, sorry. That's from last year. But we can see that we have grown a lot. And for example, when we started, there were not such a community in India at all, right? I think there was one person only. And um, yeah, we have been growing in all kind, on all uh, places around the world. This is from the 20th event of uh, the KD anniversary in Beijing, in China. And we can see here that uh, we have grown uh, both in number of developers, but also in diversity. We are come with di from different cultures. We have different ways of thinking. And that requires different skills now to communicate between each other than we needed when we started. And this is something important that uh, I think that uh, we have to keep in mind. And I think that we are keeping that in mind. And KDE is great for that. But it's uh, important to remember that uh, it's important for everyone to be comfortable here, that we uh, have a KDE code of conduct. And the code of conduct is not something big that you have to read like, like a book, but it's actually a few pages long. And you can read it at that uh, web page. It's quite short, and it's, uh, it's summarized by these points. Okay? The first one is be considerate. Um, you have to keep in mind that uh, when you are doing some change, when you are taking some decision, that decision affects others. 
and you have to keep in mind that that decision, uh, I mean, those other people that are affected by your decisions, uh, well, they can be, they cannot like it, and you have to think about that thoughtfully. Uh, the second point is be respectful, of course. Uh, there is no, um, uh, we don't tolerate any kind of, um, of um, violent discussion or, or har um, violent words. Uh, we don't uh, tolerate any kind of, uh, of uh, sexual or, or religion um, um, yeah, uh, discussion at all. Um, yeah. So far, I think we have never had any problem with that. And that's great. That's, that means we are doing good. And yeah, we should keep doing that. Um, the third point is to be collaborative. Um, yeah, that's very important in all kind of free software communities. That's the basic, that's the core of, of the free software communities, uh, to collaborate with other people and to share everything that we know and to yeah, be there for other people that need our help. And yeah, that's, that's something I think that is shown in the previous, uh, the previous pictures. If we, if we have been growing a lot, then that's because we have been collaborating well with all those people that are in, this, in those pictures. Be pragmatic is also an important point. Uh, when there are different solutions for uh, any kind of, of problem, um, you have to take the most pragmatic solution. Maybe it's not the best theoretical solution, but we have to be, uh, to be real and to find solutions that actually work. Okay? And then, of course, we have to support others in the community and get support from others in the, in the community. Um, yeah, that's basically a, a way of collaborating with other people. And you know, uh, if you f uh, feel that somebody else is, uh, if you see somebody that needs some help, um, or maybe you see some discussion that you are not part of, but you can see that there's been a discussion going on, then there's a community working group that you can contact, and they will probably take care of that. So um, those are very important points, and a way of uh, of working on that. It's not exactly. Um, um, summarizing, but it's something that can be improved in order to help with all those previous points, is working on empathy. And last year at the Academy, we had a, a, a whole keynote only talking about empathy, and I think it was very good. And if you have some time, uh, uh, I didn't put the URL here, but you can search for it on the, on the web and, and watch it, because it's very good. And, you know, empathy is very important for us because, for example, when somebody new approaches us and tries to uh, submit a patch for us and the patch is rejected with, no, that won't work, then this person might get discouraged. And I have not seen that happening, but uh, I have seen things that could be improved in that way and we could use more kind words and try to uh, say, instead of, no, that won't work, please, we can say, for example, uh, that's a great solution, but I think it could be improved this way, and maybe you could uh, try this and that and submit it again, please. <laughs> and <laughs> using kind words is important for new people to get uh, started in our community, and yeah, this is quite important. Also, empathy is an important word because I think that most people in this room actually at some point in time thought, I would like to be like Spock. Who didn't think of that like that? <laughs> okay, a few people, I see. <laughs> but actually, oops, what happened? Sorry. Actually, everybody has feelings at the end, and <laughs> we, cannot, uh, we cannot work around that. And as I said, uh, I think I'm pressing the buttons without. Well, uh, as I said, uh, everybody has feelings. I will stop <laughs> moving <laughs> because this is not going well. Okay. Uh, and yeah, um, we should try not to not to hurt anyone. Uh, you have to also to keep in mind that, uh, as I said before, we all come from different cultures, from different parts of the world, and maybe something that we say that uh, we are used to say, and we are common with that, and we don't care if it's sounds very a bit bad, but well, we are used to say some things. Maybe for other cultures it's not so common, and maybe they find something uh, violent or they find something wrong. 
And yeah, we have to, to keep in mind because, for example, uh, as a kind of, uh, of, uh, of a poll, how many of you come from Europe? I guess most of you. But, sorry? <laughs> <laughs> How many are, have come, come from the UK? <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah, I mean the continent, not the political, <laughs> political thing. <laughs> How many of you come from the, uh, America, North and South America? Okay, a few of you. Uh, how many of you come from Asia? That includes India and uh, China, maybe? Okay, quite a lot, I see. That's great. And from Australia, is there anyone from there? Or, yeah, New Zealand, so, you know? Okay, so we have place to grow. <laughs> we, have, we can maybe do some events there or something. <laughs> okay, so, so far I've been talking about our community, but uh, our ecosystem also includes other communities around us. And, yeah, we are KD, of course. I think you already know that. <laughs> and around us, we have uh, many distributions. Uh, of course, I have only put uh, a few of them. There are many more. I don't, think I don't have to say that. Uh, I'm sorry if your distribution is not there. I don't have a space, in, if, even if I use it 20 slides to, to write all the distributions. But uh, yeah, I'm sorry if yours is not there. Uh, but as I, as I said, we have distributions that are working on KDE somehow, and we, have, uh, we are generating software for them. Then there's also the Qt company, the Qt community that is around us, and is generating a lot of software that we use, and at the same time, there are many KDE developers contributing to, to Qt. We have the genome uh, community. Um, as, as you see, in many of those cases, not only in genome, but many of those cases, the communities have different goals from, that, from us. But uh, we can work with them, and we have to work with them, and we have to collaborate with them. And in the case of genome, it's especially important because uh, some people may, may think that they are, um, um, they are uh, um, an enemy or something like that, but actually we have to work with them and collaborate as we have been doing in the free desktop um, work groups. And I think that's important to continue this collaboration and continue collaborating with them. Uh, we have also other desktops, XFCA, and as before, I cannot write every one of them, but yeah. We have the new community, then XR, Wayland developers. We are using them. At some point, we have to collaborate with them. Then we have other uh, communities that um, we don't actually use directly the code that they develop, but we use the data that they provide for us. In this case, Wikimedia, uh, OpenStreetMap, like Music Brains and Meta Brains. Uh, we have the Free Software Foundation. Well, I think this was a bit change of order. Uh, the LibreOffice Document Foundation. The Open Source Initiative, the Free Software Foundation Europe. There are many, many communities around us that at some point in time we have to talk to them, we have to communicate with them. And then there are also individual developers that are in their home uh, working at some point, maybe they contribute a patch, maybe at some point they, yeah, they start collaborating with us, and maybe they are working on another uh, application that just uses some KDE library, and they're not really an actual part of the KDE community, but they are using the KDE libraries, and at some point we have to talk to them. And this means, as you see, quite a lot of communities, this is only a small representation, and and yeah, we have to talk to all of them. We have to keep in mind that all of them have different goals. In some cases, uh, they may clash with us, and in some, and some other cases, uh, we can actually collaborate and work together in order to benefit each other. And this means something that uh, I want to share, we'll share with you with this slide, which is that uh, this is a, a picture of one of the bars in my city in Malaga. And you can see here that many people like to drink coffee in different ways. This is uh, the different names that are given to a glass of coffee, depending on the proportion between coffee and milk. And you can see that we give different names so that everyone can come to the bar and ask the waiter directly for what he wants. So in the same way, people work with, 
in different, very different ways, uh, even if they use the same tools. This is a, a slide I took, uh, a picture I took from a paper that I found while researching for the keynote. It's a, it's a kind of old paper from 2012. But it's very clear here that uh, they analyze it how people use Baxilla. Okay? And in this case, we can see uh, in each of those graphs, each node, each uh, point is uh, one developer or one user of Baxilla. And each edge is, uh, um, uh, how do you say, a collaboration, a um, relationship between one developer, one user, and another. Okay? And you can see here that in Gen 2, for example, everything is, is mostly together in one, one section. But in KDE, we have different clusters with different working groups that work uh, together, but mostly separate from each other. And in Eclipse, and especially in NetBeans, they use Vaxilla in a completely different way. And each developer practically works alone there and talks only to a very few people. So this means that even if, if all those uh, projects that I showed here use the same tools. We use it in different ways. And for example, if you have to collaborate with uh, Genome or with some other, with Wayland or with XR, uh, and you want to contribute a patch, they will probably uh, need a different requirements that we do. And if, for example, instead of requiring to uh, submit patches using Fabricator, they may prefer to receive patches using GitHub or they may prefer using mailing list, and we have to keep that in mind in order to, to contribute and to collaborate with each other. Okay, and I, will, I would like to give a, a small example of that, that kind of contribution, which happened with uh, Plasma long-term support, and with the Plasma developers and the SUSE developers, in which this case I represented. And that's the reason I, I knew this, this uh, collaboration uh, a bit uh, more, with more detail. And I wanted to show you uh, what happened here. Uh, last year, OpenSUSE LIB 42.2 had a release date scheduled that was happening very close to the release date of Plasma LTS, Plasma 5.8 LTS. And this was a problem because um, yeah, we couldn't uh, get Plasma 5.8 into LIB. And we, at we, I mean, I'm not talking, now talking about we as in we in OpenSUSE. <laughs> we wanted to include the latest KDE version, the latest Plasma version. So uh, we talked, the Plasma developers and the OpenSUSE developers talked, and we decided to help each other by moving our schedules. And the OpenSUSE uh, release manager decided to, um, to delay the, the release date a few weeks and the Plasma developers decided to advance a few weeks the, the release date. So there was time to package everything for OpenSUSE. And this is important because uh, Plasma 5.8 was released on October. And just one, one month later, we had all the packages uh, packaged uh, for OpenSUSE, tested, and introduced into, into the distribution. And in fact, we not only introduced 5.8, but 5.82. <laughs> which was already available there. And that was a great success, successful, successful story, sorry. And, and yeah, everyone, I think everyone in OpenSUSE was very, very happy with that. And also, uh, on, as a continuation of that, the OpenSUSE LIB 15 schedule is uh, happening next year, around March. We don't have a specific date yet. Uh, but some weeks ago, uh, we had a, a, one of the Plasma developer meetings. And, and yeah, we talked there about that because uh, we would like to have the, another version of Plasma LTS there. And, and we requested to have an LTS release uh, available there for that. Because in another case, for, for OpenSUSE LIB, uh, we actually needed uh, LTS release. And the only uh, LTS release that we had was two years old, uh, when, when OpenSUSE 15 was, is going to be released. So this meant that uh, we requested to have the, the Plasma, uh, a new Plasma release, and the uh, Plasma developers uh, del delivered quite well. So I would like to thank uh, all the Plasma developers, especially Jonathan Riddle and Marcus, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Marco, Martin and also um, yeah, 
Ed, Ed, where are you? He's not here, probably sleeping or still. <laughs> Sebas, I don't know if he's around here, yeah. Um, because uh, yeah, you made it possible, you, you will going to make possible <laughs> that we have a new KDE version on, on OpenSUSE Leap, and that's great. Okay, so as an example of collaboration between communities, we, uh, yeah, KDE realized that uh, we need, now, now I change it again to say we as in we KDE, okay? <laughs> and well, before that, before that, I forgot something. And yeah, be, uh, I forgot something important because uh, Douglas, who is the community guy from OpenSUSE, brought me something so that we can show that uh, we are happy with the KDE changes that you made for us. And I'm going to throw this away and see who is awake, okay? Okay. Okay. <laughs> I nearly forgot. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah. So, I was talking about the KDE advisory board, which is, uh, which is uh, something that KDE created in order to hear from, from the communities around us. And yeah, I think that this is very important and I think that this has achieved a lot. And I hope that it continues achieving things because uh, it's important that all, all uh, communities here, these are the communities that uh, mostly care about KDE and the communities that KDE also want to hear from. And yeah, you know that the KDE advisory board tries to, well, you know how it works? Maybe I should uh, explain a bit how it works. The KDE uh, provides a dedicated contact person from KDE so that uh, each of these projects that are part of the advisory board uh, have representatives that can contact that, that uh, contact person at any point in time if they have a problem or if they have a question. And in this case, for example, uh, Ed was uh, very, David Edmundson was uh, very, very uh, helpful with that because uh, um, um, in my case, I'm the representative for SUSE, and we uh, talked a lot about, uh, about these plasma changes that we needed at, at OpenSUSE. So I think that uh, it has worked well, at least for, for us. And then we also have regular meetings. Um, yeah, uh, regular meetings using video conferences. I don't remember the, the, the space of time between each of the meetings, but I think something like six months, if I'm not wrong. But yeah, something like that. And in those regular meetings, we, yeah, they are all the contact persons and representatives are together and we can ex uh, talk together and communicate within, between each other. And talk there about our needs and about our requests and everything. So, apart from our community and the community around us, there are also other people on, around the world there are many people that are, that are not part of any community and we have to reach them and we have to get them together with us because we have a, a vision that is to have a world in which everyone has control over their digital life and enjoys freedom and privacy and for that we need to reach everyone. So, thank you. You can just repeat the question. Okay. Questions? <clears throat> so, Antonio, the, uh, the picture of the Bugzilla network graph, mm -hmm. uh, there were three main centers of activity, and it was 2011. Yes. What are the, uh, sense, what are the, uh, the, the main points there? Do you know? The main points? Uh, you mean the, the black dots? Yes, the, are, the, the, the dark, the, the, well, the well connected pieces in, the, uh, in this beautiful KDE connector, connector uh, graph. You mean the clusters, right? Yes, the uh, clusters, yes. Um, I don't know because I haven't made the, the, the paper, but uh, I can tell you that I forgot to mention that this is over a, a, a time period of four months, if I'm not wrong. This is only the, the, the relationships between persons in a four-month period, okay? 
And there are, you can see there are the number of persons participating in, in Baxilla and the uh, relationships. Yeah, but I'm not sure exactly which of these uh, points represent, which of these groups represents. I guess, I'm not sure, but I guess uh, the big one is probably plasma. <laughs> but uh, I'm not, I don't know. Sorry? It's PIM. Maybe, maybe it's PIM, yes. Uh, maybe we can uh, contact the, the authors and ask them, and they probably have the, still the, the data. My question probably was the same. I, oh, okay. I couldn't uh, hear his question, but the question is mine is um, if you know, if, because I, uh, I understood that it is not your work. By the way, if you know how do they measure that, I mean, how can you? Uh, uh, keep track of you know relationships and so on. I don't know mails or there is an instrument that yes. is yes. able to. Do you know how? No, this is mm. only on Baxilla, and I'm not sure. I don't think they have to. Oh, other. internally on, on Baxilla platform. So yes, you're right. exactly. Sorry, silly question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just in case, by the way, but what he said is that uh, maybe it's not plasma, but uh, PIM like mail and something like that. I think one of them must be Amarok. I reckon the one that writes is Amarok from 2011. Uh, they would be, they would be one of the cool people. <laughs> so my question was, um, are, there, are there minutes from the advisory board meetings that I have maybe missed? Or can you tell me what sort of things are discussed there? I'm not sure, but uh, I think somebody asked a few weeks ago about that also. Um, yeah. um, I'm not sure if they are available. I, I guess they should be at some point. Ah, sorry. Basically, we discuss about uh, the needs of all of those uh, members. And for example, in my case, I don't think I'm sorry. There. I uh, I don't think I will say anything wrong if I say that uh, in my case, I told everyone about the needs of SUSE and about uh, the requirements for these uh, SUSE releases. And basically, in my case, I told them that. Uh, told everyone so that they knew that we can contact the Plasma developers and that uh, it was working well, the relationship, and yeah, that kind of things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but for example, Canonical is also there, and I think it's important that they know that we, they can contact us if they need something from KDE, and yeah, you know. It's important that everyone sees the, the relationship between each other. Uh, in your opinion, what can we do to improve the, the relation between KDE and the rest of the, of the distros? Uh, assuming that the distros have people that care about KDE, but uh, traditionally it looks like that uh, we haven't done a great job about it. I mean, we have a success story, as you mentioned. Uh, how what can we replicate that to others? I think that's the question that everyone is asking them, themselves. <laughs> I don't have a, a real answer for that. I mean, in my case, uh, I can talk about SUSE, and in there it's uh, difficult to get KDE into the SLE desktop, but for, for LIP, it's the default desktop. So uh, yeah, the, the requirements so far are, are being fulfilled, and the release manager is quite happy with, the, with KDE, with Plasma, as the, main, as the default desktop. Um, I don't think there's any, any plan to change that. Uh, in order to change other distributions to use KDE, maybe we should reach them and try to help them create packages. I don't know. I don't really know. Oh, yeah, I just wanted to say that for the research questions regarding uh, connectivity and things like that, uh, you should talk to me or Kevin because uh, we've done that stuff. Hello, me again. So I saw some worrying comments on one of your mailing lists that um, somebody in SUSE thought that uh, KDE had decided their preferred distro because they, they were all going with KDE Neon now. And as, as the KDE Neon uh, developer, I, I, I think this is a, well, this is obviously nonsense and it's important to say because KDE Neon is like two or three of us starting a project and starting it with KDE rather than KDE starting saying, oh, this is the project we're going with. It, it's just two or three of us starting it with KDE. So I wonder if 
does that idea still exist within SUSE and other distros, and is it a problem? It's, uh, it's difficult to talk about the whole community or the whole OpenSUSE community. I think there are persons, individual persons, that maybe they're not fine with KDE having a special place for Neon, but uh, in general, I don't think there's any problem. I mean, there are some people that have expressed myself, uh, have told me that, uh, that they have a problem with that, and it looks like KDE is uh, yeah, having a special place, a special uh, name for Neon, and putting it too much. I, don't, I, don't, I haven't seen that, and I don't think it's true, but uh, yeah. There will be only always persons that uh, that uh, think different from you, and you have to take with that and, and live with that. But in general, I don't think there is any problem from the open source community with respect to Neon. Yeah. Um, we talked a lot about distros, but uh, your other head is uh, president of KDE Sp uh, España. Yes. Um, KDE España is clearly a successful thing for KDE to have. Um, what do you think uh, KDE can and should do to, to help KDE España more, but also other local groups like it? Well, <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> right now, I mean, uh, we are generating a lot of events, and we are going to a lot of events, in part thanks to Baltasar, who is uh, quite active <laughs> in that regard. And yeah, so far, I think that uh, probably the most, the easiest way to collaborate with us is economically. But uh, I don't think that we are so, uh, right now in a position that we need economic support from KDEV. So uh, I don't think there's any problem with that. Uh, in fact, uh, well, we have, uh, we are kind of making again our numbers on the treasurer is making again numbers, and maybe in the future. But so far, I mean. I don't think there's any, any special support that we need from, from KDV. In any case, thank you for the, <laughs> for the help. Uh, my question is more towards development. Uh, I'm not sure if you're the person to ask. Mm -hmm. um, how is the effort of integrating KD frameworks back into Qt going, and how much of KD frameworks is left? That's probably a question for David. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah. So indeed, when we had the, the, the meeting in, in Rwanda in 2011 that, that started the whole framework effort, one of the very radical ideas that came out at the time was, let's take all of KD Libs, as it was called at the time, and put it into Qt. And of course, that's not exactly what happened, uh, but it gave us a bit of a direction, which was, let's try to put into Qt what actually makes sense there. And there was a large number of classes that appeared in Qt because you know, there is no reason for KDE to be the only ones who can create temporary directories or stuff like that, right? That's very general uh, needs. So this actually went into Qt. But everything else um, is, you know, entire technologies on top of Qt, and that is just too much for Qt itself. So all of that is what created KDE frameworks, which is a, you know, a whole set of add-ons on top of Qt, like many other people do as well. So. Um, I'm quite happy with the result, which is we managed to put into Qt what made sense there and to keep the rest as a separate set of libraries. So we don't have any more time for questions. Let's give a hand. Thank you.